Smilodon fatalis is possibly the best known of the Machairodontine saber-toothed cats. It appeared in North America about 1.6 million years ago and later migrated down to the west coast of the continent of Peru. It became extinct around 10,000 years ago. It was a fierce predator, about 1.5 to 2.2 meters long, or 4.9 to 7.2 feet, and 1.1 meters, or 3.6 feet tall. It weighed 160 to 300 kilograms, or 350 to 660 pounds. It was a bit smaller than a modern-day lion, but much heavier. It had relatively short legs and a short, bobbed tail, a bit like that of a modern-day bobcat, which is why it is called that, because of its bob-like tail. Its front legs were especially powerful, and its body was adapted for springing onto prey, but it was not a very fast runner and could not be adapted for chasing after fast-running prey like deer. Its 30-centimeter skull had two large saber-like canine teeth, and these were serrated, oval in cross-section, and up to 15 centimeters long. Many Smilodon fossils have been found with broken canines. A fossil wolf was found with a Smilodon tooth fragment embedded in its skull. Although the saber-toothed cat has no close living relatives, paleontologists reconstruct how the saber-toothed cat looked by comparing its bones with those of large cats living today. Very powerful front legs and a short tail indicate that saber-toothed cats use stealth and ambush rather than speed to capture their prey. Recent investigations suggest that this saber-toothed cat probably used its long canines to slash through the throat severing the windpipe and cutting the jugular. What is interesting about his two huge-sized canines, a study showed they were easily breakable. With his very long canines, it is very hard to imagine the saber tooth would have enough space to apply a throat bite on a large neck. Since wild animals have normally protective thick skin and may have thick fur as well, it is difficult to imagine these easily breakable fangs being used as deadly weapons. They also could be very vulnerable in combat against a powerful striker. The saber tooth could be more like a scavenger using his claws to open the stomach of a dead animal and his canines digging inside soft tissues. In Pleistocene North America, Smilodon fatalis had to endure heavy competition over food and territory with other carnivores including American lions. Atrox, in the lion's scientific name Panthera leo atrox, means cruel or frightful in Latin. And from what we can tell, this certainly describes American lions. Standing at almost 4 feet or 1.2 meters tall at the shoulder, almost 8 feet or 2.5 meters long, and up to 420 kilograms or 930 pounds in weight, American lions were bigger than modern lions. They had long, slender legs with retractable claws, and they could roar. Although it's not certain if American lions had manes or not, their large size and bulk, sharp teeth and claws, and long legs would have made them a frightful sight indeed. These long legs would have made American lions formidable hunters as well. Similar to modern lions, long legs would have allowed American lions to sprint very fast, possibly up to 30 miles, almost 50 kilometers per hour. However, it is probable that they could not sprint for long periods and had to rely on ambushes. Being a carnivore, American lions would have probably hunted various other Pleistocene animals, such as horses, deer, camels, ground sloths, young mammoths, and bison. They might have hunted and lived alone or in small prides, kind of like modern lions. Whether the American lion hunted by itself or in groups, it must have been successful. During their time walking the earth, American lions walked themselves all across North America. Fossils have been found from Canada to as far south as Chiapas, Mexico. The earliest lions known in the Americas south of Alaska or from the last interglacial period following which the American lion spread from Alberta to Maryland, reaching as far south as Chiapas, Mexico. 
it was generally not found in the same areas as the jaguar, which favored forests over open habitats. It was absent from eastern Canada and the northeastern United States, perhaps due to the presence of dense boreal forests in the region. A dispute over a carcass would have been possible, but what would be the outcome of it? To begin with, the lion was heavier than the saber-toothed cat. The average Smilodon fatalis is believed to have weighed between 350 to 500 pounds, whereas the average male lion is estimated to have weighed around 560 pounds. The lion would benefit from having more weight in a grappling contest, because size matters. In terms of strength and power, the lion likely outperformed the saber-tooth due to its weight advantage. While it is fairly well known that Smilodon evolved to have thicker and stronger limbs than modern cats to wrestle large prey, the American lion was no slouch in that regard either. Studies have shown that the American lion had much stronger forelimbs than an extant lion of similar body size, and its general robustness was comparable to Smilodon and Homotherium. Pound for pound, they probably would have been fairly evenly matched in strength. But again, the lion having the weight advantage would have given it the edge here. Regarding fighting ability, the lion would have held the advantage here too. The male lions evolved to grow much larger than lionesses because the males had disputes over territory and mating rights. The massive sexual dimorphism shows that male American lions must have been adapted for fighting and intimidating rivals. By contrast, Smilodon shows very little sexual dimorphism, to the point where males are indistinguishable from females. This suggests that Smilodon were generally less aggressive and confrontational than lions, and they would have had less fighting experience. In terms of weaponry and firepower, it is hard to pick a winner. On one hand, the lion had a much larger and more robust skull than Smilodon. There is no doubt that the lion had much greater bite force. Its jaws could withstand more stress, and it could use its mouth to grapple and control its opponent. On the other hand, Smilodon had long saber teeth. It also had immensely powerful neck muscles and a wide gap to use them effectively. The length of the saber teeth meant that they could inflict much deeper wounds than regular conical teeth. Smilodon could have driven those fangs through the rib cage or even the skull of its opponent. Overall, it could go either way, obviously, but it would be safer to back the lion, mainly because of his weight advantage and being a more practiced fighter. Smilodon holds the wild card, though. If the lion makes a misstep, the Sabretooth could end the fight very quickly. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.